Join the Dark Order. What's up, y'all? Thanks for stopping by the Surge T channel. I am Surge T. And I bet you didn't know, but y'all didn't know that uh, Fred Sanford was an OG member of the Dark Order decades ago. But anyway, let's get on with the uh, video, which is, will be my rundown and thoughts on AEW Dynamite for the 17th of November 2021. And it's uh, National Cowboy She's Knit Day, as uh, JR likes to say, because I guess JR don't like to cuss, and I don't blame him. And it's for the new champ in his hometown of Virginia, Hangman Adam Page became champ at full gear, we know that. And that's been pretty damn cool. I think that it's a long time coming. And uh, they're out there. And really, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, any time wasted as uh, Danielson comes out. And he's all congratulatory and wishes he was facing Omega. And I'm thinking he's supposed to face Omega because he had a draw in his first mass, uh, match. I say. But Hangman gets in the jab and says that he beat Omega in less than 30 minutes. You know that to be true. In, of course, we're referring to Danielson and Omega's 30-minute draw. Now, Danielson even mentioned wrestling at WrestleMania and wrestling the next day. Hangman said, how about we wrestle now? I mean, he's trying to take jabs at Hangman. Maybe he's trying to avoid wrestling Danielson on Dynamite. And you see a back and forth uh, between them, and then they come to blows. Well, one half of uh, the Dark Order tries to keep Danielson back, they try to keep, the other side tries to keep, you know, Hangman back. It's a typical way of building tension. And uh, all I keep thinking is, uh, is Danielson a heel now? Because I was thinking that would it work, the two of them being, um, you know, red hot, uh, you know, faces right now. But apparently uh, Brian Danielson is a heel. And the thing about it though is I like when he's a heel. Even when he's in WWE, he was a good heel. So let's see what he does here. And I think it fits the mood of this match. Uh, you don't want uh, Hangman Page to be the, 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 the heel. And I think that the two of them and this kind of thing wouldn't be that great to have them both as faces. So I guess uh, those powers that be, those people backstage felt that, yeah, let's turn uh, Danielson a heel. Now, why I survived he give off uh, here anyway. Now, Brian Danson uh, happens to be facing uh, one of the members of Dark Order, and that is Evil Uno. It's a physical match, and Uno was taking some stiff shots from the American Dragon, whom the crowd was chanting no as he was delivering some stiff kicks. Normally they'll say yes, right? Every kick. But the Psycho Knee takes Uno out, but Danielson slaps on the triangle sleeper, and Uno is out, and the match goes to Brian Danielson, who talks with Shivani afterwards and proclaims he will kick all of Dark Order's heads in. And in Col Cobana's town in Chicago, he will do this, just that to Mr. Cobana. And he even said how he probably would have made it a, a, a very fair, um, not so hard hitting match um, with Uno. He probably wanted, he would probably would have wanted to make it a technical type of match because Uno has shown that he can wrestle that type of match. But he said, hey, because of the fact that they made it personal and the fact that what uh, the words that um, Hangman had for him. So he said, okay, I'm going to change it up and be a little more physical and a little more harsh to Evil Luna than he was. Now, MJF, he talks about proving everybody wrong. And he proved that he can wrestle bell to bell, and I do agree. You know, he comes out there. Well, he's not, he didn't come out there yet, but uh, this was uh, definitely after the match. And... You know, it's one of the one of my uh, one of the matches I said was the best match um, of the evening at Full Gear, and you know, there's no denying, no one's gonna gonna say that he sucks as a wrestler. He's he's amazing as a wrestler, but he tends to do a lot of heelish stuff, so that's why some people will go, "Is he really a good wrestler?" And then when he shows out and he comes out, I mean, it's just like no question, no denying that the guy can wrestle. And then uh, we see 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. Where the hell have they been? Maybe on. Uh, Dark or elevate, eleva, ele, evolution or ele, 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 elevation, right? And because I don't watch those shows, so I don't see them. And then they're button heads with Eddie Kingston, and um, he's looking to, for a fight. <laughs> it's funny because the 2.0 is referring to uh, 
Daniel Garcia as their son or something like that. And then Eddie Kingston's like, you know, you must be ashamed of yourself allowing two grown men to call you their son. You know what I mean? Like, it's like they're not even, they're not, you know what I mean? <laughs> because it's the same thing as like Johnny Gargano calling, uh, you know, Dexter Loomis his, um, you know, his, his son-in-law. You know? I mean, people can feel that tight with somebody, that close with somebody. You feel like that's their son, that's their daughter, that's their brother. You know, that's how it is, you know. But now let's move to the uh, Butcher and the Blade versus Orange Cassidy and New Japan's newly crowned a never open weight champion, Tomohiro Ishii. I recognize that Ishii because that's the last name of Oren in, um, you know, Kill Bill, right? And we see uh, this match, you know, okay, we see it ends with a sheer drop brain buster. By Ishii and Chaos wins this match. Chaos, of course, the faction that welcomed in the best friends. And this is the first time we see Tomohiro Ishii. He wins this match, a fun one. And this Ishii has a neck like a bulldog. <laughs> He's built like a bulldozer, and he was great. Physical. The Butcher is no slouch. Uh, he can throw some punches that would knock down an average man. I guess Ishii wasn't an average man. He was, he was begging it on. Come on, bring it on, bring it on. We saw the blade try to... You know, to enter, you know, he tried to enter the, uh, introduce the uh, brass knucks in at one point. And all those guys, right? Um, all of, almost all of HFO. I'm so, um, a good number of them were out there. Uh, but, you know, the Orange Cassidy and uh, Tomohiro Ishii were able to win this match. And it was a very, like I said, a very fun match. Very physical, very tough. I love seeing, uh, when they bring these Japanese wrestlers over, I don't I get a chance to, to watch New Japan. I would love to. But when they bring them over, you know, like all these other guys that they've been bringing over, it's great. I love seeing it. I love seeing it. This guy's the newest, uh, the new, I believe he's a multi-time champion. I can't remember what how many times he's been a, a never uh, never open weight uh, champion. I've heard of the title before. It's kind of a, a unique name. I don't know what the purpose of that name is or what's behind it, uh, you know, but... Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of nice when you have different titles with different names. It's not always the same type of name, you know, that people are going, you know. But I guess they're doing, I guess they're doing that to make their, their uh, company a little bit different from others. And yeah, AEW does that too as well. Now, Andrade and FTR want an eight-man tag. Molokai on their team, you know, they'll have them with them. And they take on the Lucha Bros, Pac, and Cody. I guess... Uh, it's not uh, over between the, these eight men, and oh, and Tolly tells Arn that if he ha has that he has one more in him, and if he decides to stick his nose in this business, you know, pretty much uh, that's I think that's a match that everyone wants to see. I I know I want to see it, because they're at the same round, the same age, round, I'm sure, and in the same level and stuff like that. So it would probably be a good match between the two. You know what I mean? But they're old, of course. They're much older than they used to be, especially when they were the Brain Busters or they were in the WWE or they were part of the Four Horsemen. You know, but uh, who else would want to see? It wouldn't be that long. It would just be them, you know, you know, bringing an old school style of wrestling to uh, AEW. I like to see that. We'll see. Now, uh, the good doctor is still your women's champ, and Tay Conti before that claims that she will walk out the champ the next opportunity she has, and I do wish her the best when she gets her another shot. Uh, I love Ty Conti, you know, I think she is very talented. She really did show a lot in that match. You know, a match that, you know, I, I enjoyed and I thought was really great. Uh, the match, it just seemed like, like I said in my, um, you know, my um, Full Gear review, that it seemed like they slowed down the more the match went on. And I'm thinking that maybe it's just because of the, the nature of it, the pace of it. Maybe they went at each other uh, too hard and too uh, physical and all that, and maybe it drained them, I don't know. But... The thing about it, though, is that they still carried that match really well. They still did, you know, and uh, it was a great match. And I'd like to see uh, Ty Conti and her go at it again. And we'll see. And then Dr. Britt, you know, uh, she wants to, sh the shift, to shift the attention uh, to the future women's champ, Jamie Hayter, the future TBS champion, possibly, but she and she could be, but she needs to get past uh, Thunder Rosa in the next uh, qualifying round. I know I said... The uh, semi-finals when I was talking about uh, Kawashita and Nyla Rose. I thought it was the semis, but uh, it was still it's still the uh, you know the quarterfinals. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it's gonna be a, a good match, I think, between Jamie Hader and uh, Thunder Rosa. But I need to see more of Jamie Hader. I, you know, I've seen her pretty much. She's just she's just a corner a corner woman to uh, thing man to um, Doctor Britt all the time. You know, she, she's wrestled, of course. I've seen her, but 
you know, I want to see some more. You know what I mean? Because I want to see what how if, if in fact she has a chance against Thunder Rosa. We'll see. Now, fifty-one and ten is Karo Shida's. Who, that's her record. She actually faces uh, Nyla Rose, who is at fifty. And uh, this match uh, will definitely be something we'll all be looking at, uh, like I was looking at, because I'm thinking, and it was mentioned that uh, if Nyla Rose wins, she will have her 51st uh, victory and tie uh, Kyle Shida. And they take those impressive win-loss records into this quarter round, uh, in the uh, quarterfinal round in the TBS uh, championship round. Uh, they will face the winner of Ruby Soho, Chris Statlander match, and uh, that's going to be a good match. I can't wait to see that one. Now, we see some, you know, some pretty good shots and um, spots in this thing. We saw um, Nyla Rose crash through a chair on the outside. She was on the, on the apron. Uh, Kyle Shida was seated on the chair, and through the air goes uh, Nyla Rose. She crashes through it, obliterates the chair. And then Vicky, she gets a kendo stick for her trouble. She tried to uh, hit a Kyle Shida, and she took it away and started to... Uh, Way laying on her and Jr. with a funny line, Jr. has been hitting it uh, out of the bark park with these uh, lines of his late, lately. He go, Vicky is screaming and shrieking, and he says glasses are breaking and dogs are barking. And I'm like, oh, good line, uh, Jr. You're back to you're back in form. You are back in form, my friend. I love it. And then Sierra D makes her presence felt. I didn't even know it was her. I thought it was someone else who signed with AEW, but no, it was her. And she takes out Sheeta. By attacking her injured knee. And then I see the rivalry is continuing. And I don't mind that. I thought they had a great uh, few matches lately. So that's probably going to continue going on. And then her bad knee proves to be her downfall. Uh, I forgot what she tried to do. I think she was trying to do it for a typical like a roundhouse kick or something. And then she uh, taps out to the stretch muffler submission. As uh, Nyla was able to get her uh, her head underneath uh, uh, Karashita's knee. And, you know, and, and we all know what the stretch muffler looks like. And that's what she had it on, leg, her knee draped over her knee, and she's just stretching and stretching. And Karoshida had no choice but to uh, tap out, which is sad. I was pulling for Hikaru Shida. And this marks Nala Rose's 50th, 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 marks her 51st victory. Try to say that five times fast. And um, tying Shida. So... That's good. I didn't realize that, that she had that many victories. I mean, she's very dominant, uh, Nyla Rose, but surprised that she had that many victories. But, uh, you know, she, you know, now it's a matter of uh, one, each one of them are going to try to get another victory so they can kind of one-up the other. Uh, but uh, that's pretty impressive. I mean, Jungle Boy has his, he's like, what was his um, record? Like 62 wins, something like that. Now he has like, he stands at that at amount now, which is pretty impressive as well. But, uh, you know, congratulations to uh, Nyla Rose, um, all because of uh, Sheeta's knee. And they did a good thing about it. I didn't watch the buy-in match, but Vicky Guerrero worked over uh, Carl Sheeta's knee. And, um, you know, probably with that little help from Jamie Hayter, whom, you know, not Jamie Hayter, but whomever, whomever else was involved. In I think I think they were with, uh, I think they were with Jamie Hayter, and they, I think so, in that match, because I didn't see it on uh, the buy-in part of uh Full gear. Now, uh, Malachi Black, uh, he's back there backstage and has nothing but ominous words for the quartet of Cody, Pac, and the Lucha Bros and advises them to take deep breaths. Talking about something like taking their breath, taking their life, taking their something. Like he's, you know, typically what he says backstage, ominous words. I mean, sometimes you don't even need to listen to everything and you know what he's up to. So let's see what happens when uh, that match uh, takes place. Now, MJF is the most complete wrestler. Well, I agree, based on the, his performance at Full Gear. He takes a jab at Hangman, and he feels he deserves to be the next AEW World Champion. Hmm. Without even a qualifying match, uh, I think that uh, that's a no. You know, I think you need to, uh, I don't know, earn the, that match uh, there. Uh, win a qualifying match. How about you enter yourself into these tournaments? I don't see you around. You're always just, you know, they're talking about how you only wrestles a few years, a few days a, a year, right? That's what, um, what do you call it? Was it? I think it was uh, Excalibur. He says, yeah, for the guy who only wrestles three times a year, you want no title shot? He's not even under radar. Is he even on the top five of the uh, ranking, you know, when it comes to the world title? Um, you know, yeah, I don't know. And he talks about how no one's on this level. That's what he feels. And then Punk's music hits, and I like this possible feud. I'm like, bring it. Bring it on and uh, 
oh man and i love how punk you know he looks at him and mjf uh you know reaches out his hand to introduce himself i'm mjf and cm punk just punks him uh punks out M um, mjf smiling he, you know, he just turns around and he's laughing as he walks out of the ring. And he leaves uh, the uh, usual uh, loudmouth uh, MJF uh, speechless. He didn't say nothing. He's like this, like, what's going on? You know, but uh, that's going to be something. I mean, you know, you'll, you'll be always talk about, and people are criticizing him for not having, uh, you know, marquee matches. And he's building. You know, he's starting, slowly but surely, he's starting to build up now to the, to the, you know the main type, the main guys, and the top. You know the you know top card guys, main eventers like MJF and all these other guys. But it's how it is, man. Because it's because it's like a whole thing of uh, damn if you do, damn if you don't. If he would have went straight to the top and went after Kenny Omega, what would people have said? People would have uh, been like complaining. And then some people are complaining when he's going from the lower card guys and working his way up. That's how you do it. I've been watching wrestling for forty years, man. I think I know uh, a little bit of what, what's going on with him and how he's... I'm not going to complain. And those of you who have been watching wrestling some time now, think about it, all right? Before you open your mouths, think about what you're thinking or what you're going to say. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, what do you want? Punk to go straight to the top? Go after Omega when he was champion? Or do you want him to build his way up? Either way, you know, you got people out there that aren't satisfied. They just want to complain and bitch. That is their goal in life. Don't mistake what I do on these videos. If you, when you, when those of you watch it, for bitching, no, I'm like pointing out, you know, discrepancies and and things that don't make sense and all that stuff that makes sense when I say it, cause I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I've been watching wrestling long enough to know what works and what doesn't work. I'm not saying I'm the best at it. I'm not a damn expert, but you know, when I say that thing, it's something that I believe, and you know. Listen to me, you guys, and you'll probably see that, okay, this guy is trying to make sense, or the guy makes sense, or, and you don't have to agree with me, you know, I'm not saying that, but I do know a little bit of what I'm talking about, I just, I'm just what I'm saying, you know, you take it for what it is, <laughs> now, Darby, he's set on a rematch with MGF, but he's open to taking on the biggest and the baddest, and then Billy Gunn steps up, and Darby says, Screw it, you know, let's do it. And uh, it was actually was set up for next week. Uh, I don't believe, I believe it's for uh, Dynamite. I don't know if it's for this Friday or Rampage or it's for next week. Um, they, they announced a lot of matches. I didn't take note, but uh, a lot of good ones. You know, even that eight-man tag uh, was set up between Cody, Pac, and Lucha is taking on um, FTR and uh, Malachi Black and Andrade. So, uh We'll be seeing that match too next week or maybe this Friday. Now, uh, the Bucks are still not cleared, but Cole and Fish will team up to take on the Jurassic Express. And that's undis. Whoa, whoa, you can't say that, says, uh, the, um, says the Bucks, as uh, Fish was about to say, and that's undisputed. That's what the US always say, of course, and those of you who follow their careers, Fish and Ora uh, Fish and um, Cole in uh, NXT where they were undisputed there with O'Reilly and Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong. But uh, that was funny. I liked that thing. And uh, so at least we're going to get to see them. That's going to be cool. See the, uh, you know, one half of the quartet that was the undisputed era now in uh, AEW. And they're going to have a tag team match. The Bucks. Well, I already said that. Let's move on. <laughs> Dante Martin and Leo Rush take out the acclaimed as they are rapping outside the ring. I'm annoyed with them. They can't rap for crap. And I love that. And they take them out. And, you know, as they do uh, suicide dives to the, uh, to the outside or tope suicidas as, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Excalibur likes to say. And this match was very, very, uh, it's a lot of fun. It was a very athletic, very fast paced, especially when you got... Leo Rush in there, and I've been watching Leo Rush since WWE and NXT when he was the Cruiserweight Champion, when showing that stuff. I mean, yeah, he could definitely get you from any direction, any part of the ring, you know, and uh, the acclaimed are good. I mean, I'm not going to fault them in their wrestling. Their rapping sucks, but their wrestling don't. They're good. 
And then, of course, Dante Martin, uh, he put out, he showed up, and he did everything that we all expect out of him. The guy does seems like he does different things every time. It's not the same thing every time. I mean, if he does, it still looks like he's doing it from a different angle or maybe even more higher or something like that. I mean, he did the uh, that double, um, what do you call it? That double, uh, you know, top rope to top rope, and then he does the, um, what do you call it? The moonsault. And uh, then we see the uh, man of the hour, uh, Leo Rush, do his frog splash, which is a uh, quite a sight to see. I love how high he gets on that thing, and he was able to uh, connect with that and get the win for uh, he and Dante Martin. And then Rush and Martin get the win, like I said. And then Taz offers Martin a contract. He tells him, "Hey, we gave you some time, stuff like that." And I love how Taz, wow, they're a very dominant faction, aren't they? What were they doing at uh, Full Gear? Uh, uh, scouting, uh, uh, what do you call it? Scouting uh, talent? Are they that big enough? Or are they, are they that uh, thing for them to be able to do that? Like anybody cares? Like, oh, wow, they're a big faction. Wow, they need to add a... Yeah, yeah. How about you bring uh, somebody who, who can impress me? Because I don't like nobody on Team Taz. I really don't. I think uh, Ricky Starks is, uh, what do you call it? He's obsolete. He's overrated. I don't like Hook because Hook doesn't do nothing. What does he do? Stand there, you know, looking like a kid on, on Pee Wee League or something like that. He has, uh, what do you call it, his uh, wife beater shirt on, but then he has no arms. I mean, it's like, is he still growing? Is he going to grow anymore? And then Hook. That's how, he, that's how he shows you how he's a mean guy. You know? Woo. Yeah, he's, you know, he can kick my ass. Maybe Hook can kick my ass. I'm pretty sure they can I'm not saying they don't, but they don't impress me in the ring. It's probably the worst group uh, from the best uh, faction in the comp this company, Inner Circle, to the worst, and that's them. And, I mean, yeah, you have the, uh, what's that? God, these, they, uh, I can't even, I can't even, the best men, what, no, not the best men, but who are those guys? You know, you got Dolph Ziggler's brother, and you got Cesar Bonani, and, and Peter Avalon. What are their names? That's a bad group, you know. What's the other other ones that you just like? Why are you there? Like, there's one there's a one point where AEW has so many damn what you call it, man, so many damn thing um factions. It's just like it's getting clouded or crowded, I just say. But yeah, they come out offering a contract, Dante and Martin. I mean, it's 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 simple, Dante. I know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, was I even following? Just as kind of I kind of zoned out when uh, they, when Taz came out. So I don't know if he, he what he said or did he give him another ultimatum? Did he tell him, hey, you know, you got one more week? What? I don't know. Now let's go to the main event. That's the uh, for the TNT title. That's Sammy Guevara, the champ versus uh, Jay Lethal. He comes out with the Macho Man uh, started like the Macho Man thing, pomp and circumstance. But then it, then then it flips after like a you know, maybe like ten or fifteen seconds, and then it goes to a another type of music, on, which is pretty cool. They kind of. Start off with that, and then it's morphed into a, it's, it's a, you know, his own theme song, which is cool. And this match was very, very, um, oh man, I'm telling you. I'm not surprised because I am a fan of Jay Lethal. I watched him on TNA, The Impact. I've seen him in other stuff, too. He's a really good wrestler. He's held, um, I believe he's, he's a former world champion in ROH. I believe so, if I'm not mistaken. And he was an X-Division champion in uh, Impact. Uh... Maybe he was the uh, X Division champion as well. Oh, yeah, I believe so. No, didn't I say that? I just said that X Division, and uh, I believe a tag team, tag team champion. I believe he may have had some shots at the world title there. I don't know if he was a world champion. Um, but uh, him and Sammy just totally uh, match each other move for move. Uh, sometimes uh, you see these guys transitioning out of uh, these guys' moves, their opponents' moves, trying to get them down, trying to pin them, trying to uh, tap them out. And all that, um, at one point, Sammy Guevara, you know, he nailed, uh, I don't know how he uh, survived, but uh, Jay Lethal was taking some stiff knee shots, high knees uh, to the jaw, once, twice, I think third, three times. And uh, Sammy Guevara answers the challenge and delivers a defeat to Jay Lethal, who showed us why he is one of the best in the world. But tonight belonged to Sammy G. We saw... Um, as he was getting up, uh, he was, Jay Lito was kind of going just to his jaw, kind of like, mm. 
making sure his jaw didn't get dislocated. Out come the inner circle, they congratulate Sammy, and then they give, uh, what do you call it, his props, give him hugs, you know, as J I think Jericho gave uh, Jay Lito a kiss on the cheek, I think. That's kind of respect he had for him, you know? And uh, then we saw um, them in the ring, and they all, you know, had their hands up, you know, um, raising each other's hands up, and uh, I think we're all winners uh, watching this match. It was really a phenomenal uh, match. I, you know, he said he did say that uh, he is uh, all elite, so we're going to see more of Jay Lethal. Uh, maybe another match between these two. I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, maybe Jay Lethal can work his way to the world title. We'll see, but uh, a very good match, man. My God, it was amazing. It really was. Um, it's the first time, and that's kind of a, a, a thing where it's the same first time that the uh, TNT uh, Championship was uh, in the main event. I don't know if they're saying the main event on um, Dynamite or on both Dynamite and or uh, Rampage or AEW in general. The first time it's ever been uh, defended uh, in the main event. But it should. Uh, you got uh, Sammy, J uh, Sammy G as the champion. There's no, uh, you know... Uh, I love the fact that he's a champion, and he really is uh, probably one of the best champions they've had uh, hold that title. And Jay Lethal, a great challenge. Um, I know that he wasn't going to win because, uh, you know, this is uh, Sammy uh, Guevara's uh, first run, and they probably want to make it a little bit longer. They don't want him to drop the title just yet. Maybe these guys will face each other some months down the road, and maybe uh, Jay Lethal will win the championship. But uh, anyway, uh, that's my... Uh, Run down the thoughts on AEW Dynamite for the 17th of November 2021. I enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, amazing. I think it was the best show uh, so far this week that I've watched. So far I've watched Raw and I've watched uh, NXT 2.0 and um, Raw was garbage. NXT 2.0 was better than last week. But it doesn't take, you know, they needed to make put out more effort to defeat uh, Dynamite. Dynamite is just that. Dynamite. Explosive. Blew the, blew the roof off. You know what I mean? And uh, I totally enjoy it every week. I've never had issues with it. Sometimes maybe, but not much. Not much. But I enjoyed it. So uh, for those of you who stopped by and checked out my video, I appreciate it. And in closing, as always, take care.